hoop. This hula hoop represents all the different modes of social organization human beings oh, have come up with. Years. This is how we did everything. And it's sort of tribal format, the way lemurs do. This is what we call tribalism. It was the way we did everything, again, for about a million years. And the rules of tribalism were very, very different. In fact, I should mark that with a T so you remember it's tribalism. The rules of tribalism govern how human beings did pretty much everything for about a million years. And it worked out well enough for then. What was this way of life like? Well, it was mainly hunting, gathering, foraging, following the herds to try and find food. It was very different from the way we do things now, except in the ways that it wasn't. Every lemur knows you take care of your own tribe as best you can. You share your food with your own tribe. You spend a lot of time wondering about who's going to be dominant and so forth. And this is the way tribes are maintained. Again, that lasted for about a million years, until something fairly remarkable happened. One of these primates, or a couple of them, realized we could take seeds and plant them and wind up with a whole bunch of food, even more food than we ever needed before. And we learned how to have um, livestock, there we go, goats, and other livestock so that we could actually get by pretty well and suddenly we had something we never had before. We had surplus. Surplus raised some interesting concerns. So along developed two new modes, which I should mark out with wine again, shouldn't I? We're going to call them you know, the left mode and the right mode. I think of them as hierarchy in the marketplace. There we go. H for hierarchy over here. M for the market. Two very different forms of social organization that evolved all of a sudden. Hierarchy, of course, looks something like this. Got a good view. We have a pyramid. As soon as we have surplus, the question is, who's going to get more than enough? Depending on different societies, it could have gone a lot of different ways. But the fundamental idea was you get a pyramid effect. And they actually displayed it that way architecturally, too, of course, where there's some people who get to decide who gets stuff and some people who don't. It's all managed through a system of rules. Lots and lots of rules, lots and lots of layers. The problem with this whole model that you've seen before of the pyramid is, really, demographically speaking, the bottom should be about, you know, 10 times as wide as it is, at least. Something like 90% of the people in medieval Europe were, you know, you know feudal hierarchy like this, they were peasants and serfs. The people at the top is really very small, so really it should be shaped a little bit more like a thumbtack or an extremely fat-bottomed Hershey's Kiss, perhaps. Now, a couple of things changed when we shift over from tribalism to hierarchy in the market. These two, the hierarchy and the market, came around about the same time, though. So I guess I should talk a little bit more about the markets. Market, of course, familiar with that, is what happens once we invent stuff like this, right? We get money all lots the time. Lots and lots of money. Until about 10,000 years ago, um, you might have a fairly flat system, fairly small groups, and uh, let's see, let's start with a warrior. Rawr, brave, fierce Max. A warrior, totally different from what you get under the hierarchy. Max is a warrior and he goes out and he's sort of you know, the, the real army of one. Under the hierarchy, on the other hand, the goal is to train soldiers to convince themselves that they really are expendable and disposable pawns, essentially, to go out and march in formation and be willing to lay down their lives to die for, oh, you know, a flag or something. So you've got uh, a very different mode. We switch from warriors to soldiers. A soldier follows orders. And that kind of underlies a whole lot of the idea of what makes the hierarchy system a hierarchy system. Your goal is to know your place, follow your rules, do what the people above you on the ladder tell you to do. If you do this well enough, Maybe you'll get to move up the ladder. In most systems, no, you really don't. So we go from soldiers and bureaucrats in the hierarchy system, instead of, say, warriors and gatherers and hunters in the tribal system, to the market system. And the roles of the market are supply and demand. Whatever shows a profit is worthwhile. And we get, you know, characters pretty ruthless in that regard. Um, I'm a little bit reluctant to use a pirate to symbolize the market because, well, people do think of pirates as do anything to make money sort of people. The real pirates historically were maybe a little bit more tribalistic. They tend to be very democratic. 
But the overall look you get on this guy's face of, I'll do anything I have to to get more money, sums up the basic idea of the markets. You also notice that hierarchy on the left and markets on the right fits well with our left and right wing idea of the way most of our governments have handled things. For the past 10,000 years, there's this tension between should we have state control of things over on the left there, the left wing we could call it, government control of things, or just let the market decide everything. Whatever I can charge for something, that's what it's worth. Whatever I can get people to do for money, that's perfectly fine. This is the logic of the market. The logic of the hierarchy is whatever the rules are, you better obey them. And whatever the people above you say, that's what the rules are. Let's see, what else am I missing out here so far? Any questions? So, I'm sure you're wondering about the space at the bottom here. That's the new one. Remember we had about a million years of existing in the tribal mode. And then about 10,000 years ago, we switch over to these new, new modes on top of that, hierarchy and market. But bear in mind that even while we're dealing with hierarchies and markets, we haven't done away with the tribalistic systems, right? We still do some things that way yeah, very here much. Here is the new system with the new social model, the network. N for network. This is really only within the past hundred years or so. We've got walkie-talkies, we've got cell phones, we used to have cell phones, we've got remote controls, all these gizmos that connect us. Now, this is probably familiar to a lot of you because you're probably seeing this on YouTube or something. A lot changes when we introduce this new mode as well. Now, have we stopped being tribal? No, we haven't. Have we stopped being hierarchical? No, we haven't. Have we stopped having a marketplace? No, we haven't. But now we have this as well in addition to everything else. The network's logic is the more people you're connected to, the more things you're connected to, the more you can have ideas and information freely flowing all over the place. And this is a problem if you're, say, running a government, which is used to control in a very top-down sense of information, because network is about information flowing in every direction as much as it can, right? Or if you're running, say, a newspaper, under the old marketplace ideas that whatever you can sell people is a good idea, suddenly we switch over to th this new idea, in addition, the network, where we've got what we call prosumers, who are both producing information, like bloggers and people like that, and they're also the consumers. Suddenly they don't have the filter. Suddenly a lot of the things you were doing on a market basis Someone else is doing for free on the network. Microsoft built a great market system for a long time. Unfortunately, they were so good at, well, I can't say they're good at anything, actually, but they were so successful in terms of promoting the network model that along comes the network model, and now, instead of spending a lot of money to buy Microsoft products, I can just go to openoffice.org and download things for free because the network is all about people who are doing things without financial concerns, regardless of control from above. Uh, and in that regard, because the network isn't hierarchy or market, we often confuse it with tribalism. It resembles that a lot. It's a lot flatter, it's a lot more egalitarian in a way, a lot more individualistic in a way, but it's not the same at all. If you've ever spent the whole day, as a lot of us who are snowbound here on the East Coast have done, with your only social contacts being from your network on Facebook, you start to really miss the real human interaction that comes from, say, playing drums with people, or fire dancing with people, or just talking to people, for Christ's sakes. Um, and a lot of my favorite things happening these days come from what I call Tribal 2.0, which is where we're looking at all this and saying, we've got hierarchy, we've got networks, we've got markets, all of which confuse us, all of which are going on at any given time. But there's also still the tribalism underpinning everything. So can we escape from our day jobs, which involve these things pretty much, and use the networks to organize things like this, uh, this little jar of playa dust symbolizing Burning Man? which is kind of sort of tribalistic, except unlike the tribes, you can opt out. If you're born into a traditional tribe, that is your tribe, that's who you are, you can't get out. So what I'm encouraging you to think about is, how are all these four different modes functioning in your life at the same time? You may have tribal solutions to some things, market solutions. If you can't buy the product you really need, sometimes you can just download it. If the government doesn't take care of what you need, maybe you can get it from the marketplace. Maybe you can just get it from your network somehow. Or maybe you can find your own tribal links in a very more personal and primal way instead. And if you're a little bit mindful about what you're using at which time, you can recognize each of these has different rules, different ways of doing things, different strengths, different weaknesses. Do your homework. This is Manko. Out.